uh, Principal N Nicole Ubenu, thank you so much for, for uh, having me into St. Thomas Aquinas uh, here today. My name is uh, Mike Torzai, and uh, I'm the Speaker of the House in uh, the Commonwealth of Pennsylvania. And uh, we're here to, to um, take a little bit of a victory lap uh, to talk about some success that we had in the past budget and how it's helping schools like St. Thomas Aquinas. And then at the same time, uh, we're gonna talk about where, where we'd like to take it next year. And um, what I'm talking about is the Educational Improvement Tax Credit and uh, the Opportunity Scholarship Tax Credit. You know, this program had been created under uh, Governor Ridge some years ago. And uh, the idea was with the Educational Improvement Tax Credit that businesses throughout the state could get up to 90% of their corporate taxes, um, their corporate taxes uh, could be, they could get a tax credit for it by directing that the money be sent to scholarship organizations, to scholarship organizations that then would be able to allow scholarships for kids, students to attend schools like St. Thomas Aquinas. And, um, and uh, it's really been an important part of allowing school choice in the Commonwealth of Pennsylvania. Now, now keep in mind, in this past budget, K through 12 public education, we spent well over $11 billion in state tax dollars. The total amount of tax credits that we offer under the Educational Improvement Tax Credit or the Opportunity Scholarship Tax Credit is now at 175 million. It's not, not, not close to the number we are spending on K through 12 public education. But one size does not fit all. And in communities like here in South Philadelphia, a school um, with the love and security and this wonderful building and, uh, and the uniforms and uh, the, the opportunity you know, n to focus on uh, you know, a, um, a, a moral, uh, you know, a moral background, a Catholic background. Um, some people want those opportunities and uh, they should have some school choice and St. Thomas Aquinas clearly offers that. And uh, what we did in the past budget is, is we raised the EITC component of it uh, by $25 million in new tax credits. That was part of the, the budget that was completed for 1617, 2016, 2017. So, so we took um, the EITC program from 100 million in tax credits to 125 million. And then of course we still have the 50 million in the opportunity scholarship tax credits. So the total amount is 175 million in tax credits. What we also did earlier is, is we made sure that you could not hold the EITC or OSTC program hostage, for the lack of a better phrase, in a, in, a, in a budget battle where the budget's not getting done. The tax credits still continue to have to flow uh, and, it, it, and, and you have to make them available. You cannot just stop offering them. And uh, that's important because uh, a lot of the, the schools that are reliant um, and there's after school programs too. We were just at a, a charter school that uses EITC uh, for its after school programs. Uh, some public schools use it for after school programs. Um, and, but, but the key is, is that folks that would like to go to a school like St. Thomas Aquinas, that it can keep its doors open so that young men and women in the community can come to that school. Now, I wanna talk to you a little bit about the independent mission schools, Brian McElree, the chair of the board, Ann McGoldrick, the president of independent mission schools. If you remember about uh, four years ago, the Arch Archdiocese, the Archbishop had said that they might have to close some schools, neighborhood schools, that were, were providing love and security and good education and, uh, you know, and, and, and uh, good values. Um, might not, not have uh, been able to keep their doors open. Under the leadership of um, Brian and Ann and, and, and many others, they created the independent mission schools and, and Brian and, and Ann, I think you told me 15 schools now. And, and how much was it, uh, would you say, that was in debt 
when you started the independent mission schools, the collective debt for those schools? The schools were losing about $2 million a year. So they create independent mission schools, and these schools all now are under the umbrella of independent mission schools, and they now have a positive reserve. That's unbelievable, Ann. It's unbelievable. And, and, and in large part, it's not solely, but EITC and OSTC allow the independent mission schools to operate, um, operate in the black. They also have people who are giving private contributions as well. But now why are, why are they here? Why are they here? Because of these great kids. They're just outstanding students. And they want, and their moms and dads, grandparents, want them to have this opportunity to come to a, a, a great school like St. Thomas Aquinas. And um, the new program that we're proposing for next budget, we're going to introduce it in this year, but we, we, obviously we won't get it done in this year. Um, because our session comes to the end here at the end of October uh, in terms of a, vote, a voting calendar. But what we're looking for is, is we want to increase the Opportunity Scholarship tax credit by $25 million, to take that from $50 million to $75 million. And we want to take the EITC from the $125 million that it is to $175 million, increase that by $50 million. And, um, why do we want to do that? Because the more and more we get across the Commonwealth, the more and more we see young men and women benefiting from it. And um, it, it's just a, it's a mission to, to take a word from the uh, independent mission schools, but it is a mission to make sure that, that, that places like St. Thomas Aquinas thrive. And uh, to you moms and dads and uh, Students, thank you so much. Um, who wants to, I'm, I'm putting somebody on the spot. Who wants to come up and, and tell us why they're, they're here at St. Thomas and what grade they're in and, and what, how long you've been here and what you've been up to? You want to give it a start? Sure, why not? Hey, tell everybody your name. Tom. Hi, my name is Travis Short. I'm in eighth grade. I've been here since kindergarten. I love the education here. You know, there, there's friendly teachers. All the students are kind. It's everything really any parent would, would want for their child. I love it here. And no, you wear a uniform, right? Yes. Do you like it? Oh, yeah, I enjoy it. Don't have to think about it in the morning? Yeah, and you have uh, multiple choices. You have a button shirt with ties, or you can use a polo shirt like I'm wearing right now. Yeah. Now, what are you thinking of for high school? You, you, you have to kind of decide that this next year, right? No, yeah. Do you know where you're thinking of heading? Well, I'm thinking of Newman Gretti because of the distance to my home. And, you know, I went there for visitation day, and the education there seems pretty decent. Yeah. Well, you seem like a pretty bright guy. Thank you. Um, now, let me bring up one young lady. You want to come up and tell me your story? Sure, please. My name is Tian Thorin, and St. Thomas is a really good school. It's safe and secure, and it's a very good place where you would want to put your child at. I've been in here for about eight years and about to graduate, but... I can bring my previous knowledge from St. Thomas to the world or like another high school and know that I will be able to thrive in it. And where are you thinking of for high school? Probably Newman Gretti. You're thinking of Newman Gretti too? Yeah. yeah. I always read, they like have this like great basketball program, don't yeah. they? Yeah. Yeah, I always see them in the papers. Yeah. They're in USA Today all the time. Yeah. Thank you. How about you? Come on. Come on. Tell, tell us <laughs> your name. You well, guys have the better stories than I do. Um, uh, hi, my name is Giovanni Pagaria. I'm in eighth grade. I'm almost here since um, pre-K, which is almost nine years. So I like the school. I like this school because the teachers are kind. Like Miss Onevu, she gives us um, best education that we need, and our our students are responsible for respecting other teachers. Boy, that's it. Now, what were you thinking of high school? Um, Newman Gray. Oh, you are too. <laughs> yeah. Well, that seems to be a popular one. Does anybody else want to go to Roman? Anybody going to Roman? Anybody going to Roman? Nobody thinking of that? My son. Oh, your son is there? He's there. I want to bring him there. Okay, okay. That sounds good. Um, N N Ms. Unebu, would you mind coming up? She's the new principal here, but she was the assistant principal for the prior two years. And I, I think she ought to tell you about... Uh, 
just how great of a school she has here from pre-K to eighth grade. 300 students, you said? 300 students, currently. Please go right ahead. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. Um, I'm Nicole Unebu. I'm the principal here at St. Thomas Aquinas. Um, I'm truly blessed to be the principal of this school. We're one of one of very diverse school um, in our IMS network. We have a, a mix of children from African American, various populations of the Asian community, from Cambodian to Vietnamese um, to Indonesian, and then we also have a portion of, of our students in the Hispanic community. And we really embrace the cultures that we have here. Um, I'd also like to thank Mike for supporting the scholarship programs because um, it makes school choice um, an option for our families. And if they want a good Catholic education, they could choose one of our schools to do that in. So thank you. Oh, th thank you so much. You know, um, I myself, just on a personal level, I did go to Catholic schools, uh, and my dad was a public school teacher, and it was in a working class neighborhood. Uh, unfortunately, the Catholic school I went to back home, it, it, it closed uh, the grade school. The high school's actually thriving. Um, we have um, three boys, and uh, two of them were in Catholic grade school. Our youngest uh, had speech, and, and he started in the public high school. We have a great public high school, too. The oldest uh, ultimately is in public high school. The middle one's at a Catholic <laughs> high school. And, uh, and our youngest is in eighth grade at, at, at our a public middle school. But, but we had a choice, and, and Lydia and I were blessed. My, my wife's a pediatrician, and uh, we, we could afford to make that choice. And, uh, but we have friends that wouldn't necessarily have that option. And um, for many kids, you know, having an opportunity to come to a place like St. Thomas Aquinas is so, so important, and to their moms and dads and, and, and grandparents. So um, on a personal level, I just think it's uh, so important to have that, 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 that choice. I'm also, sometimes I, I hear people, um, you know, who, um, you know, they, they think everybody should be in, in one size. And uh, I don't know, if, if some young people are having great success in a particular place, why, why, would, why would you begrudge that? Like, why would you not want every kid to find you know what what what's best for him or her to reach their potential and and uh, clearly this is a place that is allowing uh, young men and women to reach their potential I'm just gonna get a little bit of stories come on tell me you, you eighth grade seventh. you're seventh grade so you have a while to decide what's your name Hi, my name is Noah Fernandez and I'm in the seventh grade and this school is a great place because it's very educational and it wants you to, it wants you to be successful in your life. Oh, that's great. Well, good luck to you. And young lady, we'll get, come on, come on, come on. So my name's Brianna Villalobos and I love this school. It helps you succeed into what you want to do in the future and the teachers help you with everything. Are you eighth grade? Yeah. And what, what, are, you, what are you thinking? Prep charter. Oh, in Prep Charter. Yeah. Is, that, is that close by to your home? Yeah. Oh, that's great. Good, good luck to you there. Thank you. And uh, Chris, Chris, right? Yeah, come on, Chris. Last but not least, what grade, right. Chris? Seven. You're seven. Okay. Uh, my name is Christopher Martorano. I'm in seventh grade, and I like that school because of the education and it'll, it'll help with um, high school. Do, now, do you live nearby? Uh, do you, do you, can you walk or do you take a bus? How do you how do you get like how do you get here, Chris? My car. Oh, did you get dropped off? Okay, good, good, good. That's great. Thank you so much. Well, everybody, I'll, I'm glad to take questions, and uh, and Brian and and Anne will take questions, or or Nicole as well. But uh, sir, please go right ahead. Nicole, what testing do you use? Do, do you use, um, for, or, or, or is it independent mission schools? Ann, can you well, talk to that? Well, we, we use the turnover for our standardized testing. And come on, come on up. Mm -hmm. yeah. um, we, we use turnover for standardized testing, and uh, we do participate in the um, Philadelphia Schools Compact, and so our scores are uh, transcribed by an independent um, process at Philadelphia School Partnership and published in comparison with the state scores, so we're very happy for our results to be transparent. But the state doesn't demand that the public. Um, 
I, I know that it, they do they do them because they keep up with the standards and they're very transparent and public about it. I don't know what more we would need. Well, you know, if you, if they, they, what, what would you, what would you, so we can see how this, what would you, like, tell me what you would, would want them to have that they aren't producing Take the PSSA now. and compare it to the school down the street. And do, can you talk to us about yeah, this? Yeah, it, it is something that we have considered doing just to kind of quash that exact question. Um, it's a big shift in testing that would require a lot of procedure around it for us to do. So it's definitely something that we consider, but we feel like the transparency that's there by the comparison that's already out there, given to parents, given to students, given to the public, you know, meets that from our standpoint. I guess my point is that option is open to every student. It's open to this student. Thank you. Any other? Yes, sir. So, Speaker, if you're expanding this program, how do you know it's been successful. Uh, how do you know things are working? Maybe, maybe that's already been asked and answered, but how do you know I uh, get businesses out there who are willing and telling you we're willing to increase this? Mm -hmm. we'll yeah, great, great question. It, it is always um, completely subscribed. There are always more people that want to participate in EIT, businesses, I should say, excuse me businesses that want to participate in EITC and OSTC than what tax credits are available. Um, and they always subscribe within, I, I believe it's like the first or second day of when the tax credits are offered. It, they, they, it, it's almost a, as soon as they're put out, and, and they're on a pro rata basis, so that if a group of su subscribers you know, want to use it, then you only are able to use what's available on a, on a pro rata basis. There, there's more uh, businesses that would like to use it or would like to use more, and um, we, we've, we've never been undersubscribed, under sub excuse my expression. So if I could follow up. Yes. What, what's your sense in the legislature uh, for support for your move to try to expand this kind it's, it's always had really significant bipartisan support. Um, we did an event recently in the Harrisburg, uh, in, in downtown Harrisburg, with me were Representative Bill Keller and Jordan Harris, both from Philadelphia, Philadelphia representatives, you know, Democrats, two of my very good friends, by the way. We also had Matt Gobbler, a Republican from uh, up in Elk County, you know, one of our more rural counties who was there in support. Um, and another two other real significant leaders, Jim Christianis from Beaver County. Uh, Jim has always been out front and uh, he himself went to public schools, but he's always just been a very big proponent of uh, EITC and OSTC. And then um, uh, we, we always get on these votes significant, um, significant uh, bipartisan support, Republican and Democrat. N Noah, on the, um, when we took the vote, now it, it was a, it covered a number of areas when we took the vote to increase EITC by 25 million this year, but it was a near unanimous vote. Uh, and there may have been a few people that voted no, but I, it was it was a nearly unanimous vote. It, it it always has significant support on both sides of the aisle and on both sides of the Capitol, House and Senate. And I'll, I'll get you the vote total on that. I, I, it, it may have been unanimous. I think I think there may have been a few no's, but not many. Yes, please. This, this does not, I mean, this, yes, there's the, the broader issue of school choice. The Educational Improvement Tax Credit and the, um, and the uh, Opportunity Scholarship Tax Credit are, are not uh, monies that actually go to charter schools. They are used typically by Catholic or other private schools or after school programs. Now, I just want to show you this chart right here. The way, it, and, and we're still using the percentage paradigm when, when the program was originally created. Under um, EITC, under EITC, 60% of the tax credits are used for K through 12 scholarship organizations. Those are organizations that are actually putting money into schools like St. Thomas Aquinas so that kids could go here. You, you would get a scholarship organization a business would donate to a scholarship organization. 
Does the independent mission schools have, do you have your own scholarship organization? We do not. We, we use blocks. You, I was going to say, you use blocks. Okay. And again, I always say blocks, but what's the... Uh, what's the stand for? Yeah, the, the, yes. Business leaders organized for Catholic schools. Yeah, like business leaders organized for Catholic schools. That's one. It's not, it's not only limited to, to Catholic schools. Christian schools, other private schools use them. But what happens is, is businesses will contribute X dollars to blocks. They get a tax credit on that, off their business taxes in Pennsylvania by donating that money. That's scholarship money. Up to a certain, up to an income level, uh, no, no one can get you the income level. That scholarship organization can give you a scholarship to attend a school like St. Thomas Aquinas. That is under this 60%. 30% are used for educational improvement organizations. Many public schools and some charter schools, but many public schools, or boys club and girls club, by the way, use them for after school programs or before school programs, more typically after school programs, it is where, where you typically see that. Now a Catholic school might be able to make use of that as well for an after school program, but, but it has a wide variety of, of um, educational opportunities that it serves then 10 percent is going to pre-k that was the most recent addition the most recent addition was pre-k in in that particular mix um and and that's about 10 percent so under what we're proposing for eitc it would these would be the this is where it is today including the increase we just did and this is where we'd like it to go on the eitc part now, the Opportunity Scholarship Tax Credit is more limited. Is it, is it um, the 10% or 5%? Or is it 15%? It's the lowest. I, I, we, the reason I say this, because I remember when we were negotiating it, we, we, we were varying on what, wh where the line should be drawn. The lowest performing 15% of the school districts, the lowest performing 15% of the school districts from, from, from the testing, you would be able to offer opportunity scholarship tax credits to students in those particular districts. EITC is available all over the state. OSTC was actually limited to school districts that were not meeting, were in the lowest, lowest categories of, 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 on standardized testing. Um, now, if OSTC, OSTC is a little bit more cumbersome in terms of its requirements. If OSTC, is not fully subscribed, those monies would flow over to EITC, and EITC is always oversubscribed. There's always people who want, there's always a, a, like a waiting list for the lack of a better term for EITC. Yes, sir. Another question. I have a product of Philadelphia Catholic schools myself. Yes, sir. This program was implemented after I graduated. School, yes, sir. But there's a lot of people who would question, how does this square with the idea that the state shouldn't be giving money to yeah, you know, it, it's never, it, I don't think it's ever been challenged. Um, it, it, and, uh, you know, vouchers were upheld in Wisconsin by the United States Supreme Court some time ago. And the EITC, the tax credit approach, it's going to the kid to be able, or the family, I should say, to allow the kid to go to the school of his or her choice. So it's actually going to the kid. It, it's not actually going to the school itself. So it follows the kid. I, I think it's a great, a great opportunity. I'm, I'm just saying that the United States Supreme Court has certainly upheld um, this approach, and I, I think it's a, a great approach. Oh, and the, I'm, I'm sorry. I thought it was near unanimous. It was pretty close. 172 to 18. And it was the public school code bill that we did. Uh, Jim Christiana was our prime sponsor. 172 to 18. Significant bipartisan vote. Hey, listen, thank you so much for being here today. I can't thank you enough for taking the time to be with us. And young men and women and uh, principal, thank you so much for having us in here.